Members, is the appointed time, and we've uh, got a qu uh, quorum. Let's uh, call the meeting to order. Today, we are going to discuss five papers. Before the meeting, the government has submitted paper ECI 2017 18 um, to members for your reference, and it sets out the latest changes in directorate establishment approved since 2002 and changes to the directorate establishment in relation to the five discussion items. I'd like to remind members if you have a direct or indirect pecuniary interest in relation to the items to be discussed today, uh, please, in accordance with ROP 83A, disclose the nature of that interest before you speak. And I'd also like members to uh, take note of ROP 84, which has to do with voting in relation to direct pecuniary interest. So item one has to do with an application from CEDD, and this is a the proposed creation of four supernumerary posts of one principal government engineer, D3, one government town planner, D2, and two chief engineers, D1, in the CEDD to lead a new sustainable Land our office SL or up to the 31st of March 2021. And redeployment of 3 D3, 5 D2, and 13 D1 directorate posts within CEDD arising from the establishment of SLO and reorganization of the existing development offices in CDD with immediate effect upon approval by the Finance Committee. On the 26th of April, we have already discussed uh, this item. We'll continue our discussion, and I have reintroduced the government officials before, so I'm not going to do that again today. So in the first round, Ms. Tanya Chan. Five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. In our discussions on Lantau, inevitably we will be talking about the uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. ICACO has have arrested 21 people in relation to some forged documents. The CEDD was the first department to discover that um, incident. The contractor involved in the beginning of uh, 2013 started their work. And two years later, in the beginning of 2015, some mistakes were identified. And recently, or in the past week, there was a major uh, operation launched. I would like to ask, now, given the present situation of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, the contractor was suspected of um, producing forged documents for over one and a half years. So what's your assessment on the impact of the works? Now, after you've discovered the incident, have you uh, taken any uh, remedial measures? And how would you uh, check on the quality? Maybe you think this is a far-fetched issue, but uh, we are talking about the bridgehead economy in Lantau, and we want to attract many visitors and overseas visitors to Hong Kong. So if there is jerry build at the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, well, this is something that we don't want to see. There may be a delay to the project, and maybe some of the parts have to be demolished and rebuilt. So safety should be first. Well, Ms. Chan, all of us are concerned about this bridge, but this seems not to be related to the CEDD's uh, funding. Well, I think it's related. Let's uh, look at paragraph 12C. It talks about topside development at Hong Kong BCF Island of Hong Kong Chihau Macau Bridge, Sunny Bay Reclamation, Seal Ho Wan Reclamation, etc. So all these are on Lantau. And also we talk about the North uh, Commercial District at Lantau. So it has everything to do with the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. I don't think I am speaking beyond the scope of our discussion. We are worried about the safety and the visitor uh, number 
etc. So um, it has to do with whether we should create so many posts and whether the um, SLO can be uh, put to the best use. Mr. Ho, we appreciate the members' concern about the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge and the related uh, fake uh, test reports. Well, irrespective of whether it's related, I want to say something on this. Well, we asked uh, the investigation is ongoing, um, so I'm not in a position to give you the details of the incident, but I must be up, uh, very clear here. Well, we put safety as our first priority. Nothing is more important than safety, so you don't have to worry. Um, safety is our top priority. That's number one. And second, we will not allow any um, defrauding act. So in our press release, we discovered um, the incident last year, and we reported the case to the law enforcement agency, uh, hoping that they would investigate into the incident. Safety of the bridge um, is our utmost top priority. Someone now is suspected of producing fake test reports. But what's most important is that whether the uh, quality of concrete is up to standard. Well, maybe I should say something more. Um, tomorrow we will hold a press conference and we will give you the details. The relevant departments are actively doing the following up work. By visual inspection, they didn't discover any irregularity. The highways department has um, carried out some non-invasive non tests, and no irregularity has been found. And uh, the department is following up actively, and they are now putting their minds as to how the quality of the works can be um, ensured and inspected. But the Yu Chung in the first round. Thank you. First of all, I support the proposal of adding the word sustainable to the office. I think the people's aspiration is very clear. Uh, what they want is that when you develop land tile, there should be sustainable development. Since we need to resubmit this item, you are proposing to create this post, you are aiming for sustainable development. And a lot of the work uh, for involved for the, these posts uh, have to do with sustainable development. But for the four most senior officers, there is only one planner. You don't have any architects and landscape architects involved. And I don't think that can achieve the purpose of sustainable development. Of course, I understand that for the other posts for which you don't need to apply for funding from the FC, you have already made provisions for that. But as far as the, the uh, leadership is concerned, uh, what we see now is that you are proposing to hire mainly engineers. Of course, you, you are saying that uh, this is because uh, we're talking about engineering projects. The most senior uh, uh, post is the principal government engineer. I can understand that. But why is it that for the other, uh, you know, uh, directorate level, why can't you appoint, you know, architects, landscape uh, uh, architects, and so on, so that we can really, you know, achieve sustainable development? Permanent Secretary, I understand Mr. Yu's question. Well, for this office, this is a uh, multidisciplined uh, team. And under the directorate staff, we do not only have an engineering team, there are also planners and architects and surveyors, uh, surveying professionals. Mr. Yu is concerned 
about the leadership of the office, whether or not it is capable of steering the the effort to achieve the vision of sustainable development. I think in previous uh, ESC meetings, I've already mentioned that every colleague involved in this project are not just working on development. I always um, uh, 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 require them to you know, focus both on development and sustainable development. Of course, in the whole of Lantau, especially Lantau North, which is going to be developed, we need the input of an engineer to take up the the the, the, the uh, uh, leading uh, role. Uh, but underneath, uh, uh, there is also a planner. I think underpinning him is a, a planner. So we want a planner to properly oversee the whole planning, including the need for conservation. As I said, we require each of our colleagues when they work on the projects. And for such development projects, they would need to <clears throat> do that. Even in, in Lantau North, the element of conservation must be on the agenda. I hope Mr. Yu understand this is how we operate and the union worry so much that we would only place the focus entirely on development. I think for the different professions in terms of the experience and training, it's all different. Since last time you you, you didn't you know use the word sustainable and the paper was not approved and now you've added the word sustainable. You have to convince the public that you are sincerely aiming at conservation and sustainable development for Lantau and you not compromise on that. The three directorate posts are engineers and I don't think the public can really trust that you are sincere in conserving Lantau. Well, I suggest that you should at least uh, appoint landscape architects or architects to the directorate uh, 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 level of this office. I've heard Dr. Yu's suggestion. I hope Dr. Yu can see that we've not just only changed the name of the office, we've also added a, a conservation team uh, in the new establishment. And secondly, the work that we do, uh, Mr. Yu is concerned whether uh, we're able to convince the public. Now, under the Land Development Advisory Committee, we have set up another working group, and we hope that other green groups can also uh, uh, give us their inputs. Uh, by doing so, I hope the public will be convinced that we are we are committed to do this. Mr. Holden Chow, the proposed uh, post to be created for the SLO. Uh, the terms of reference is rather broad, including the artificial island, the Tong Chung New Town extension, and transport development. I would like to make a few points here. If these posts were created, I hope you will uh, address these points. First of all, for the BCF of the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge, I'd like to uh, bring up the question of parking spaces. Earlier on, the government told us that there will only be 600 parking spaces, but obviously this will not be able to cope with the demand at the time. I'm most concerned that when people drive here, uh, Tong Chung will be heavily congested and they will all try to find parking spaces in Tong Chung because at the BCF of the Hong Kong Macau Chui Bridge, uh, they will not be able to find any parking spaces. And at the district council level, and our colleagues on Lantau are very worried and concerned. I hope you will really follow up on the question of the provision of parking spaces. And secondly, regarding the planning for the extension of Tung Tung New Town, the new reclamation area has already been uh, announced. At the earliest in 2023, the first batch of uh, uh, new population will move in. And in this uh, new development area, the Tung Chung E station, the MTR station, it will only be completed in 2026. 
I have indicated many times uh, and, uh, on different occasions that it is not reasonable for you to move the people into the new development and they have to wait for some time before the train station is completed. You should have provided for the MTR station there before the new population moved in. Without transport facilities and you move people in and the lack of transport uh, facilities would mean that people will suddenly complain. Thirdly, in your paper you make particular reference to the improvement of the transport uh, you know, connection between uh, the airport and Tong Chung and you will conduct a study. I hope that you will liaise more closely with the TXP and the MTRC. You should explore whether the Tung Chung line could be extended, for example, providing a, another stop at the airport. I understand earlier that the airport authority has already started such a study. I hope that you can step up the effort here. In fact, the, the we expect there will be more travellers or tourists and we expect that when the third runway is completed it will create 140,000 jobs. We hope that the people who move into Tong Chong will have the opportunity to find employment in the same area. So you should provide mass transit for them to go to the airport. Right now they only depend on the buses and there is only one AEL at the moment which caters uh, to the uh, tourists only. If we provide for another uh, MTR station at Tong Chong, you can cater to the needs of these people who need to go to work at the airport. The district council also suggested what not we can provide for a light rail system connecting Tong Chong <coughs> town centre and the airport. I hope you will really, you know, explore that. Thank you. Madam Secretary, I have heard Mr. Chow expressing his concern. Uh, he's mainly concerned about the transport <coughs> arrangements for uh, Lantau North, especially Tong Chong. We are equally concerned and we will uh, assemble all the multidisciplinary team to work together with different departments and bureaus to discuss this. You mentioned the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge and with this commission we understand there will be the need for parking spaces. Uh, so we are now starting to work on that. As for the transport connection between Tong Chung and the airport, we have heard different views. Uh, so far the transport facilities may not be so satisfactory. Given the manpower constraint, I mean, we, we are liaising with the TDs to see how we can improve on the situation. Once we have the office set up, they will start to conduct a detailed transport study to see how we can improve the transport situation for the area. Mr. Yu Si Wing, your first round. Thank you. The development of land ta is something that we must uh, proceed with because uh, the development in the neighbouring area is going on very rapidly. If we do not develop land tower, we will be lagging behind the other cities in the region. And if we were to... Uh, if we don't move forward, we would uh, you know, over to our next generation. So I support the proposal of the CEDD. Recently, there have been incidents involving the quality of the work of the Hong Kai Chui Macau Bridge. I don't know whether or not the CEDD, in the light of this incident, will adjust the works that they are doing there. And secondly, for Lan Tao, as I said, we are competing with cities in the neighboring region, but we also collaborate with them. So for the CEDD, other than the infrastructure development in Lantau, for the neighboring cities like Chungsan and Chuhai, uh, with the completion of the bridge, uh, we will have a more interactive relationship with those cities. So have you made uh, plans for that regarding you know, collaboration with the neighboring cities and to identify what are the dangers arising from our competition? 
for the competition among these cities. Thirdly, the CDD has plans to coordinate various projects. Other than these 16 projects, uh, there is also the third runway system and what Mr. Le uh, Holden Chow was referring to, that is the impact on the roads, uh, the need for parking spaces and hotel development as we have more visitors coming. So will you, the CDD also take that into consideration? Permanent Secretary, thank you Mr. Yu for supporting our proposal to set up this office. So Mr. Yu asked several questions. First of all, the Hong Kong Macau Joy Bridge. And there is now a suspected case of people fabricating the test results. And how we follow, or follow up on this incident? As I said, basically we always put safety as our top priority. I like to reiterate that we attach a lot of importance to all our infrastructural projects, including the, this, this bridge. We are very concerned about safety and the quality of works. This time the system is operating. The CDD has identified the problem, has, has informed the law enforcement of, uh, for authorities to take action. Of course, we would look in detail at what has gone wrong and how we could make improvements. The location of Lan Tao is very important. Uh, Mr. Yu talked about our <clears throat> collaboration with neighboring cities. The strategic position of Lan Tao is that it is, uh, we look at it in the context of the entire PRD region. When we look at PR, uh, Lantau, since there is uh, an airport there, it will play a very important role in international trade and logistics and, and, and because we have the uh, Lantau East, uh, East Lantau metropolis, uh, so its uh, interface with neighboring cities will always, you know, you know, uh, be a very important consideration. We see that Hong Kong has a very important position in the uh, in the Bay PRD Bay Area. For those sixteen projects, I don't think we've exhausted all the projects. But for the airport, the airport is next to Lantau, so the so the third runway definitely will play a very important role. After we've set up this office, we will be working closely with the airport authority. Thank you. Chairman, uh, what about tourist-related facilities such as hotels, parking spaces and roads? So what is the role of the CEDD in all these? So I'd like to tell members, actually, the secretary, the secretary has received some emails um, opposing the creation of such persons. Uh, a copy has been made available to members. Well, he, he ha hasn't answered my question, Madam Chair. Uh, the Mr. Yu is concerned about whether this SLO uh, will work on, say, the hotels and so on on Lantau. Uh, we will um, discuss those um, the aspects in detail to achieve synergy. Second round, Mr. Raymond Chen. Thank you, Madam Chair. As to whether we should support the creation of the SLO, it's a matter of whether we trust the government. You add the word sustainable there, and some members say it's a good thing. But then the public. may have doubts on whether um, they would really put sustainable development as a, a priority, even if the word sustainable is added there. Now, um, some views have been received uh, on opposing the establishment of the SLO. They may not necessarily object to the development of Lantau, but at least from the papers they've submitted, um, they don't trust that the government will put a focus on sustainable development on Lantau. And in the first round, Ms. Chen Chan said 
something about the Hong Kong to how Macau bread. I think it's all related. Mr. Eddie G earlier has posted a, a, a host of questions, and in the reply uh, dated 19th of May uh, from the government, the a eighth point, the eighth paragraph is about the um, updating us on the um, Macau, Hong Kong Zhihai Macau Breacher situation. Uh, the question was about how is it the progress of works after the funding has been approved. So that's related to our discussion. So members of the public are very concerned about what happened. We have a confidence crisis here. It's not that we don't trust the government. It's just that it seems the government cannot properly monitor the, say, the reliability of such major works projects. The government said that um, no irregularity has been found after visual inspection. So they are just uh, counting on visual inspection to check on the work? Do you want to reassure the public or what? But by going by what you said, you wouldn't be able to reassure the public. Say it's like you know when you lose some documents, you say that well safety is not compromised and so on. So you said that you would hold a press conference today. Maybe you should come and seek for funding the day after tomorrow. Now there are sixteen items or tasks in your paper outlined here. Now you, it includes the development of the Exlama Quarry area that falls under the ambit of the SLO, so it means that it's not taking care of Lantau only, but other places as well. So does it mean that the SLO will take care of every project in Hong Kong Kowloon on top of Lantau? So please answer that question. Mr. Chen referred to the quality of our works. I talked about visual inspection, but what I meant was that um, I, I didn't mean that visual inspection should suffice. But given the limited time, um, the first thing that we can do is visual inspection. The um, works, I mean, is in a state which is ready, say, for commissioning. And we have done various tests on the bridge columns and so on. So if the quality is really substandard, then that can be detected uh, by visual inspection. But then uh, I'm not saying that um, visual inspection should suffice. It can uh, provide 100 percent guarantee. Now, we have conducted some um, non-invasive tests as well, but briefly, um, and we will hold a press conference tomorrow we will give you all the details we it, well, it takes time for us to um, check all the issues and we can give you the details tomorrow maybe um, madam chair can I ask the director to talk about whether we can work on all the items listed now member refer to the llama uh, item in our paper one of the items to be worked on by the office is this Lama project. Lama is not part of Lantau, that's right. But then um, there are some outlying islands around Lama. So if um, they are subsumed under the work of the SLO, then works can be carried out more smoothly. First round, Mr. Edward Lau. Thank you, Madam Chair. Earlier, I talked to the Development Bureau myself. I understand that the Development Bureau is sincere in conservation while developing um, at Lantau. And many people are concerned about how uh, sustainable development and conservation can be ensured while we are developing Lantau. Pending the creation of such posts, uh, there are in, uh, in fact already some colleagues at uh, the departments who are working on conservation in Lantau. It might not be desirable for these people to be redeployed uh, to the SLO. But then if we 
um, have yet to create these posts, I, will you be still be proceeding with your work in Lantau? How is it different uh, from, say, after these posts have been created? Well, we've been asking for the establishment of the office for over a year, but our work hasn't stopped. As I said in the last ESC meeting, the, our colleagues have been very working very hard given the limited uh, resources. But since we don't have a designated office, it's difficult for them. Uh, anyway, we are proceeding with our work, and we don't have this uh, one-stop office, so the work has not been uh, proceeding too smoothly, and the efficiency has been low. And we are working on the um, sustainable blueprint, uh, which is expected to be uh, released in September. We want to do it as soon as we can. So it shows that without this office, um, our work efficiency has been compromised. I think we support the proposal in principle. Um, after all, we've got so many items to be worked on, and we have to strengthen our efforts in conservation and sustainable development as well. You talk about four posts. Uh, engineers and town planners and so on. They are from the, say, the engineering um, stream. So if that is the case, how can you convince us that the work on sustainable development can be carried out effectively? Um, the office will be dominated by engineers. So how can you convince us that uh, you will work more on sustainable development. Uh, in my answer to Mr. Yu, I have touched on that as well. The leadership positions are going to be filled by engineers and uh, town planners. So I think they are a professional team. Now, uh, for the team underneath them, it comprises uh, people from various disciplines, the architects, uh, surveyors, and other types of engineers as well. And we also have a dedicated team which will look after conservation work. Um, people from the, say, the forestry um, stream. So I must reiterate that um, our colleagues will not just focus on their own areas. They will make sure that um, they would uh, have a due regard to development and conservation at the same time at the and at the particularly at northern Lantau and in southern Lantau um, we are talking about conservation but by this we didn't mean that uh, we are stopping people from go going there I think what we should focus on is to how to make the best use of the resources for public enjoyment. So there might be a little bit of development work on the southern side as well. So the uh, development element is um, also there on our conservation work. So, well, what's important is we will look at, at the outcome, whether we are really attaching importance to conservation and development at the same time. I understand that uh, you can um, now uh, d work on, say, planning and studies and so on. But if we talk about sustainable development and conservation, you to need to have a lot more communication with the stakeholders. So if you have dedicated people who can um, liaise with the stakeholders, that would be best. So can you undertake here that after the office is established, you will have um, full communication uh, with the stakeholders? I, I Actually, we are in fact already doing that. Um, in the uh, Sustainable Development Working Group um, under the Lantau Development Advisory Committee, we have established another working group. We are pulling in um, representatives from, from um, green groups to work on that. And we are asking them to submit proposals uh, f uh, on conservation. So I support uh, the creation of the posts. The second round, Ms. Tenya Chan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I may not be able to fully support this funding proposal. I hope that uh, you can understand. Uh, Mr. Lee, 
Mr. Robin Lee has come to us before uh, to talk about how um, overseas practices have been taken into account in the uh, formulation of the conservation plans. Well, I appreciate that effort. Maybe, uh, well, we would uh, preserve the um, uh, mangroves and, and so on. I think the, we're moving in the right direction there. And, for example, the sea wars, the seashores, we're not just talking about vertical um, uh, seashore and sea wars. There will be some, some sort of a water friendly uh, facilities uh, to be built there and water friendly features to be incorporated. So, um, these uh, can be um, incorporated in other projects as well, I think. And, I think that's an interest, interesting proposal. Maybe I'll give you some time to uh, tell the public about your conservation efforts in various areas. So can I now defer to Mr. Robin Lee to elaborate? Thank you, Mrs. Chen. The SLO will focus on the uh, striking a balance between conservation and development. In development, we will have uh, some conservation work. So in the northern part of Lantau, we're, even we were developing it, we will conserve. Uh, for Tung Chung is uh, reclamation at the sea wall uh, for the first time. We will incorporate some sustainable development element, and there will be a sort of uh, ecological um, seashore shoreline, and and we have a taken reference from overseas uh, practices, apart from the birthing areas. Um, there will be um, other features to be built in. There will be mangroves, um, there will be mud beaches, and so on. So. So as long as the uh, current allows, we will build in certain features at um, areas where um, the conditions are suitable, then we will build in these features. In 85% of the land uh in the country parks, and they are of high ecological value, and we will uh, put in a lot of efforts to conserve them. And going by overseas ex uh, practices, the principle is that we will not build a row, say, in a high uh, value with uh, in an area with high ecological value. So we will just uh, um, the tourists uh, ask the tourists to be accommodating. We will not um, build a row that uh, destroy the uh, natural environment just to allow people to get close to the nature. So this is the direction that we're heading towards. Thank you. Uh, uh. Thank you. I think what Robin said is very important. When we go hiking in other countries, you need to apply for a permit beforehand, and there would be a quota. And as you hike uh, uh, along the trail, I think you need to make the plan yourself. Uh, well, I hope that you would consider you know, setting up such a mechanism and that the mechanism would be transparent so that the public can arrange the time and apply beforehand for a permit to go to the uh, conservation areas. Mr. Buchiwa, your third rung. Thank you. Since our last discussion, and according to the, uh, and the and for the questions raised by members uh, today, the question is whether or not struck from the structure of the SLO, we can satisfy the principle of conservation in Lantau South and development, developing Lantau North. Uh, in conserving South Lantau, you have two assistant directors. Can they shoulder a clear responsibility? Can you convince the public that they will, of course for the whole of Lantau, there will be conservation elements. In the course of development, uh, you need to pay attention to conservation. We have a consensus regarding conserving South Land Tau, and the SLO would need to be able to show that it is it will achieve this objective. But 
at the moment, even if you have a plan planner, town planner who will be an assistant director, but there is no clear uh, indication that you would be. Uh, you have we have this concept of conserving Southland Town. And looking at the leadership of the SLO, uh, basically uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the, 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 the those at the leadership role, taking up leadership role are mainly engineers. So f regarding the team that they lead, for those in leadership roles, for example, those who are at uh, D1 scale, uh, uh, they would be architects. Can you have a clear division of labor uh, to show to tell us how the two assistant directors can, you know, fulfill the vision of conserving South Land Tao, and how his team can implement that objective? Uh, Mr. Lee also made a very important point, and I think we should put on record that it, for the whole project on Land Tao, if we want to focus on conservation. You told, you said that you will not. Uh, just to make it more convenient when for the people to go to the uh, you know conservation areas, you would first build new roads and spoil the environment. So I think we should put this on record so the public would understand what the concept of conservation is and what is the structure of the SLO. And to convince the public that you really attach a lot of importance to conserving South Lantau, which is a social consensus. Herman Secretary, I shan't repeat myself. All of our colleagues will <clears throat> focus on both conservation and development. Conserving South Lantau, it's part of our vision for the Lantau development. We understand that the division of lab labor is. I think we need to, based on our division of labor, we need to, you know, work on both objectives. As to whether we can achieve the purpose, we have two assistant directors, uh, AD1 and AD2. AD1, we, we call it uh, AD work. And the other assistant director, AD2, who is a planner, we can designate the process planning and conservation. And we also have a new designing team which will work under the AD planning and conservation. So, this does not really mean a substantive change, but in order to convince the public. To, to let the public have a clearer understanding that we really attach a lot of importance to conservation and development, we are willing to do that. Chairman, when you further fine tune the structure, of course, you need, we need to go to the FC for approval. I hope that well, you could, uh, you know, explain clearly to the FC and explain clearly what will be the division of labor, especially when the AD has to take up the duties of planning and conservation. What will be the terms of reference of the team underpinning this AD? I think what I've said will be in the minutes, recorded in the minutes of our meeting today, and I'm sure we will uh, work accordingly. Mr. Eddie G, your second round, four minutes. Thank you. At the last meeting, I submitted some questions for the Bureau. To respond, and I don't know whether the chair has read the answers. Uh, these answers are rather, uh, you know, uh, unusual. I asked about six uh, uh, study reports, and by coincidence, these reports were only available in mid-2017 or will only be available later on this year or in 2018. And I'm going to read it out one by one. The Kennedy Town and Lantau East Transport Infrastructure Study, this will only be concluded in mid-2017. Former Quarry at Soko Bay Feasibility Study, 2018. Siu Hope One Development Study, middle of 2017. 
Changsha and Soko Islands uh, spa facility. That study will be only be finished later on this year. The Ngongping Tai O cable car, again, that study will be completed later on this year. The uh, topside development of the Hong Kong Chua Macau Bridge planning and, and construction study, end of 2017. Madam Chair, the Bureau kept telling us that if we don't uh, uh, approve the creation of these additional posts, these studies will never be finished and they won't be able to submit any papers for us. On the other hand, my demand is very clear. These questions are all relevant to our discussion of the development of Lantau. These studies, item uh, 1 to 6, you don't even have a single report for us. And it's all within the portfolio, and funding had already approved for them to conduct such studies. And we don't even have a single report. So what is the basis for our discussion about the future development of Lantau? I'd like to ask the Bureau whether it is your mindset that so long if we do not approve the establishment of the SLO, all these studies, the studies will be uh, delayed indefinitely. Permanent Secretary, I don't think there's a, this is a question about our mindset. I think what we've told member is the fact. It so happens that all these reports are not available. Well, the facts are the facts. We've not said that we will not uh, uh, submit these reports. Uh, we said that these reports will be released to members once the studies are concluded. How? What is the relationship between these reports and the creation, the, the proposed creation of posts? I really have my doubts. But we've honestly and faithfully uh, answered the questions raised by Mr. Chi. It's not just our colleagues, but colleagues from other bureaus have tried their best to answer Mr. Chi's question. Chair, Madam Chair, why well, I'd like to state my position. That is, if the completion of these reports and the submission are being postponed again and again. Why don't you also postpone the creation of these posts? Instead of working it the other way around and, and, and when there is no study and no documents, you would ask us to create these posts first. In particular, the first study, the Kennedy Town and uh, East Lantau Transport Infrastructure Study, the delivery of the report has been postponed again and again. Since Mr. Chi is particularly concerned about the Kennedy uh, uh, Town project, I'll ask the director to, to, to explain. Thank you. Well, for this project, for Kennedy Town, we want to study its connection, its relationship with the with Lentau development. This is a complex subject, and the study is now at the the final stage. We project that we, the study will be completed by the middle of this year. Mr. Martin Liu, your first round. Thank you. The establishment arrangement was submitted to. Uh, this uh, committee for vetting early last year, but it was affected by the filibustering. Subsequently, it was submitted, successfully submitted to this uh, committee, but so far it's not forwarded to the FC yet. So my question is that since the ESC's proposal is so important for the future development of Lantau, and the project has been delayed for more than a year before, and and is yet to be approved. So for the whole Lentau project, what will be the specific impact? So the I think the situation is not desirable. As Mr. Liu said, we submitted this proposal to the ESC, but unfortunately when we went to the FC, we didn't have enough time. There was a backlog of other items, so we, it was not approved. This year, we've also gone to the development panel, and we're coming to the SC. Later on, we'll go to the FC. This year, because of this undesirable situation, 
we're not our colleagues are not able to focus on the work that they do and they're not able to do it efficiently as i said the blueprint for land tower development we originally planned to publish that at the end of this year but we can't do that anymore hopefully we'll release that in the near future our colleagues are also very concerned about the transport infrastructure for land tower north we need to set up the office before we can conduct detailed studies without such manpower provision we wouldn't be able to do that I'm just giving you members a couple of examples. How would it impact on the overall uh, project? Of course, uh, the, the, uh, the impact would be that there will be delays. All the works would have to be delayed. That's why we want to set up the SLO ASAP. Mr. Bujiwai, your fourth round. Thank you. The, regarding what the Permanent Secretary said, of course, we would like to have <clears throat> have that in writing before we, we, we give an indication. But the direction is is right. If the records are clear, if the records can clearly reflect the attitude of the government regarding the conservation of land tau, if the government is sincere and committed, I'm sure this can help the community understand that the development of land tau would allow uh, those parts of land tower which need to be developed could to be developed and in particular uh, that South Land Tower and the natural resources there will be conserved. But when faced with very conflicting uh, demands and there are contradictions and conflicts, how do you resolve that? For example, we always hear that uh, the transport facilities are not satisfactory on land tau, and the, the director also you know, shared with us his views. Now, when you see a contradiction, many people say they want the transport infrastructure or transport connection to a certain area. For example, in the study of the East Land Tau Metropolis, one of the areas of the study is that the bridge will pass through Heiling Chow and link up with Silver Mine Bay on Mui War. And this may conflict with what the director told us just now. Given that conflict, how would that assistant director You know, you know, achieve the 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 the, 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 the mission of developing conserving land tau in the course of the work that he does. How do we find the best balance among different, you know, uh, you know, uh, needs is our principle. For any project, whether it's development or conservation, there will always be different views. I believe, I hope you will trust that we are a professional team. and We need to listen to different views. We also have our own professional views. I hope members will also re be, agree that they are important. Whether we have asked for the work, whether we can do it, what is the public's aspiration? Together with the professional judgment, our professional judgment, I'm sure we'll be able to find the best way to do whatever we do. Madam Chair, my question is that when the AD faces such a contentious um, situation, what will be his input? Well, I have uh, set out the principle as the assistant director. Um, he would um, have would be mindful about the need to develop and con uh, conserve at the same time, and uh, um, the public may have their own views. I mean, the views may be divergent, so the AD has to strike a balance, and also we have to be mindful of the resources we have. So, if we can balance among these uh, three aspects, and we'll be able to find the right solution. So is it that the AD will put a focus on trying to strike a balance between development and conservation? As I said many times, we should accord the, the same priority to development and conservation alike. And say in our conservation work, we will think about whether there is a need to do some um, small-scale development so that um, the 
conserved resources can be enjoyed by the public. So the AUD should have uh, this kind of mindset. Your time's up. Mr. Wu, do you want the PS to submit a paper to you? Well, he should uh, give us a paper setting out the uh, latest uh, division of duties and also the structure. And also, um, the paper should set out that the AD will um, accord priority to conservation in his work. In my reply to Mr. Wu Chi Wai, um, I have made a reply um, on how the division of what will be like in the future. We can submit a paper. Mr. Eddie Chu, is your third round now? Well, let me finish first. You have submitted, and we've just received uh, another uh, series of questions. Um, the Prime Minister Secretary, have you got a copy? Yes, we can uh, give it over, uh, had a copy to the PS. So can we ask the PS to uh, give you a reply in writing? So it's now your third round. Madam Chair, we all know that the government has ways to do development. Um, all of their studies are very detailed usually. But my feeling is that regarding conservation, the government does ha doesn't have a, a good way to do it. In my um, question number 10, I have raised a very specific question on Pui O, on the dumping situation and uh, in southern Lantau. And the government's reply shows that they are totally unaware um, of where the problem lies. The reply is like this. They said that they would uh, explore with the relevant departments um, and discuss with them to find ways to stop fly tipping and illegal dumping in southern Landau and try to pr um, tackle the problem there. Now, if there is illegal activity going on, we should have people enforcing the law. Now, the question is, uh, the dumping at Southern Lantau now is a legal activity. So when the government says that they try to strike a balance between conservation and development, please, at the same time, deal with this uh, predicament uh, in Southern Lantau where dumping is illegal. They have misunderstood the situation. They think that the dumping now is illegal. So please tell me what solutions you have before I will agree to the creation of the new posts. P.S. Well, of course, um, the, if there is any illegal activity, then the first thing we do is to enforce the law. So our, in our reply um, is that we would work together with our government departments to prevent illegal dumping activities. Now the member said that it's a legal activity. We'll have to look at the, the say the aim of that activity. If it is going to be, if it is really legal, then we can't enforce law against them. There is legal dumping now, because in Southern Lantau there is no DPA plan to cover it. So that's why there can be no uh, law enforcement. And under the waste disposal ordinance, the landowners now can notify the Director of Environmental Protection and then they can have uh, dumping. And then the um, ecology of Southern Lantau is, is substantially destroyed. They are destroying the ecology there and they are using the land as um, open um, yard for storage. Well, we can um, work together with the district representatives and green groups and look at the situation. We'll try to uh, say uh, at Puyo and show you how to try to reduce incentives of pe people doing such acts. Uh, we can. We should uh, follow up immediately on the situation. Mr. Chu, I have looked again at your latest round of questions. 
Well, I don't think some of your questions don't fall under the ambit of the Bureau. You talk about population projection. Uh, you have a great sense of curiosity, and I think it takes a um, time for the government to respond to you. Uh, Ms. Dr. Fernando John, first round. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't think it's just, um, I mean, it has to do with just curiosity there. Um, Lantau Island is the back garden of Hong Kong. Um, there are so many areas in Lantau with high ecological value worth um, our conservation. We have country parks there. And we have a good marine ecology there as well. And people would like to conserve these areas very much. Now, the government is proposing a series of uh, manpower or personnel redeployment, and they would like to set up this new SAL, SLO, rather, and there is a strong objection from the community. They think that uh, we'll just kill Lantau by the way they are proposing to develop it. At the public hearing of the panel, uh, some community group groups have said that if we proceed with the development at Lantau, we can declare um, that uh, Lantau is dead. The office is given a good name now. is called Sustainable Lantau Office. So we know for sure that there will be a lot of development. But then how can the development be sustainable? Now they are giving us some broad concepts, development at the north while conservation for the south. So does it mean that is sustainable development? I've looked through the papers and I don't see the government giving us a clear principle there. And that is how the blueprint is going to be like. I just uh, see the development blueprint, but not sustainable blueprint. The government has been very specific on its development plans. But as far as de sustainable development is concerned, do you have any measurable um, indicators? To give to us, do you have uh, the KPIs as uh, they call in the business sector key performance indicators? And what about the baseline there at Lantau, from the perspective of conservation, from um, a sustained development? Do we have a set of baselines? Now, um, if there is development in the future, how will the baseline be adjusted or what? P.S. Measurable. Indicators and data, no, we don't have that those yet. As I said, at the Lantau Development Advisory Committee, it's uh, the uh, Sustainable Development Group, uh, we have set up a working group under it, and uh, some representatives from green groups have joined that working group, and we are open-minded. We would like to hear more views, and if people can give us a uh, measurable indicators, and we are more than happy to consider them. And Dr. Zhang uh, said that we have concrete development plans, but what about uh, conservation? Do we have anything concrete in mind? Uh, I would like to say this. Uh, we would want to do more on the conservation side. For example, in Tai O, Pui O, Shui Hao, we have reserved $30 million to study how we should uh, preserve or conserve nature better there. So we have reserved $30 million under the ECF. And for the Sustainable Development Working Group, uh, we are all ears to your views. Uh, to see how we can and and see how we can do better, uh, I'm pleased to, to learn that the government has reserved resources to do studies. Um, this is thirty million dollars. 
but in terms of the um, proportion, I think there will be a lot of development, but not much conservation. And thirteen million dollars is a small sum, relatively speaking. And the development model used in the past is uh, very terrifying, I would say. And when they talk about conservation, actually, they end up in disasters. For example, in Tai O, they have built the sea wall, uh, claiming that uh, the water there will be protected. But in effect, many mangroves have been removed. And no uh, vessels can be birthed there anymore. So this is a, a totally a waste. So what I'm worried that the conservation plans will do no good at all. So how can you ensure that your conservation plans will be welcomed by the districts and supported by the community groups? How can you um, set up a effective mechanism to do conservation work? Now, I said that uh, we've reserved $30 million. That's just for this financial year. We can have more, um, say, going forward. And I've said this outside this room. Um, we we are attaching importance both uh, to both conservation and development. So in development, we will fully consider conservation. Say in Tongchong development in Tongchong River to the west of Tongchong, a lot of conservation elements have been built into our plan. So you, you can rest assured that um, conservation will go hand in hand with development. Dr. Yu Chong Yim, your second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. You may notice that for Southern Lantau, there is a loophole in the uh, development plan. Once the government announced that it will develop uh, Lantau, now what we are seeing is destruction first, development later. Now people are destroying the, the, the places first, and then once the SO is established, then those sites will be picked for development. And the loophole um, is because that Back then, Southern Land Tower was not covered by a DPA plan. And as a result, even if there was dumping, uh, which go against conservation principles, the government doesn't have um, any right to enforce a law against these activities. Now, if I agree to this uh, proposal of setting up SLO, can you undertake that you would do something immediately to plug this loophole so that people will not have destruction first and development <coughs> later? I think I have given an answer to that when I answer Mr. Ju's question. And once the SLO is uh, set up, we can further liaise with the district's uh, representatives and green groups and try to identify areas with high um, possibility where for uh, for destruction by people, so that we can stop these destruction activities instantly. I mentioned Pui O and Shou Shou Hao as examples. Um, there may be other areas that can be identified. So the uh, Sustainable Development Working Group will work on that. We um, welcome your ideas and proposals so that we can take the work forward. I wanted you to do it before and not afterwards because people would uh, you know, destroy the, the, the environment before there's development. You don't have any enforcement authority. We must pluck the loophole in the law so that you would have the authority to enforce the law. Otherwise, there's no use at all if you want to talk to them because they will still you know, damage the, the environment. Uh, so you're not able to resolve the problem for the whole of Lentau South. When you do the UTPA, you've not included it in the DPA. And no matter how people spoil the environment, you don't have any power to enforce the law. And now you're saying publicly that you're going to develop land how the landowners will start to destroy the environment. They will pave uh, all the area with concrete and, and claim there's no ecological, ecological value, so the area will be incorporated into the development plan. So this is where the loophole is, and I want you to s uh, before you start the SLO, would you do something to pluck the loophole? I'm not just. I don't think you should just go there and take a look. You should pluck the loophole. 
I think work is being done already. Otherwise, we would not have set up such a task force. Uh, but I'd like to also clarify that in answering Mr. Wuchiwai's question, I said very clearly that we are going to have development to the north and conservation to the south of Lantau. So there won't be massive development on Lantau South. And there won't be any incentive for people to destroy the environment there. They are forcing you to also develop South Lantau. They would damage the environment, and then you, uh, when the ecology is, is, is destroyed, then you, you, you will be forced to develop Lantau South as well. The landlords in the south of Lantau also want a profit. So they will, do, they will spoil the environment and tell you that you should also develop Lantau South. So could you tell us how uh, what exactly are you doing to ensure that you can actually take enforcement action? I think our vision is very clear. Developing North Lantau and conserving Lantau South. Uh, so for Lantau South, our priority will be conservation. A few other members have joined the queue. For the first round, Mr. James Toe. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on Dr. Yu's question. If what he said is true, that is, some landlords uh, learned about your intentions, and if they knew about your policies, if they really plan to damage the environment uh, so that it, the area will be eligible for development, would that interfere with your intention? So how would you be able to deal with that scenario? So is there anything in your policy that can prevent that scenario from happening? Government Secretary, as I said, our planning principle is known to all. Later on, after we've published a blueprint for uh, sustainable development for Lantau South. Our planning intention is that we will develop the North Lantau and conserve South Lantau. If there's massive destruction uh, in South Lantau, there is no incentive for people to do that. And secondly, we will need to look at the, uh, the, the, the provisions in the law. If there's any illegal uh, destruction of the environment, we will work with the law enforcement authorities and after the SLO is uh, set up, we will step up the enforcement. Thirdly, uh, before you came in, Mr. Toe, I already said that we hope for Lantau South. Uh, it's certain uh, uh, important lo strategic locations like Puyo and Sheihau and Taiyo. We've already reserved $30 million. Uh, so hopefully this year, but there will be incentives for us to, you know, uh, do some conservation works. All these efforts, I hope, can help address Mr. James Toe's concern. Before you announce the the, the plan, they they uh, uh, this is your policy intention, right? But if they do what I said before that, would that you know spoil your plan? I think our direction is very clear. It will not spoil our plan. Uh, the focus is still developing North Lantau and conserving South Lantau. Well, will they actually create a, a so-called fait accompli so that, uh, that you will have to make exceptions or waivers and so on and so forth? I don't think we will be held hostage by anybody. Anyway, I've already stated what our direction will be. Mr. Leung Kuo Hong, your second round. Thank you. Good morning. First of all, I hold a different view from my fellow colleagues. You say you're going to conserve Lantau South. Well, now, this is your policy. But you've not explained how you're going to conserve uh, South Lantau and where you're going to do it. That's the uh, the typical. This is typical of demonstration. So you can't blame us uh, unless you tell us what is the meaning of conserving South Lantau. 
you look at NT North East. Once you announce your plan to develop NT North East, people start to illegally occupy the land and, and spoil the environment there. And the site will need to be 40,000 square feet before uh, you, will, you will approach them for development. Leung Chan Yang Si Wai Leung came up with the idea that the site will only be developed if it has a size of 40,000 square feet. This is what we're worried about. The Secretary for Development, I understand that Chair Wai Chin is likely to be appointed a new secretary. He could be the next uh, Secretary for Development, a former electrical member. I don't think I have any confidence left, if that's true. Mr. Leung, let's come back to the topic. I think, you know, you, you, you're you at the bottom of the league and you're going to play in, in, in the, pre, uh, the Premier League. Chairman, I have two concerns, Madam Chair. For Lenta North, you have announced that you're going to develop North Lentau and conserve South Lentau. Uh, there will be destruction on Lentau North because you've already announced that you're going to develop Lentau North, right? Uh, so, so after they've spoiled the environment, uh, then you have to do something. How are you going to stop such activities in the north of Lentau? For Lentau South, how can you stop a, uh, a scenario that is likely to happen? So if you don't tell us what do you mean by developing Lantau and if you do not you know, designate the area where no destruction will be allowed, people will certainly destroy the environment. So what is the difficulty uh, uh, which explains why you, you can't do it? If you could come up with such a proposal, I can immediately approve your project. I don't really quite understand your question. Developing North Lantau and conserving South Lantau is our policy direction. As to what specifically we will do, that would depend on the blueprint for sustainable Lantau. But a year ago, the Lantau Development Advisory Committee had positioned the develop of development of Lantau, saying that for the North Lantau Corridor, uh, that will be the major <coughs> uh, focus of development. Uh, reiterate that in the course of development, there must be a conservation element as well. With the SLO set up, they will be able to do that. Chairman, Madam Chair. The conservation element is that the office has arranged for a Mr. Lamb to follow up on this, an officer by the name of Lamb. So what, how important is that element? I said what Mr. Lung referred to, a Mr. Lamb. We're talking about three uh, uh, officers, and it's not that three officers can undertake the work of the whole department. All of our colleagues will place equal importance on development and conservation. So this is different from funding. How many people you have deployed for this purpose? If you if you want to be the you know champion of the Premier League, if you simply if you simply buy up all the players, does that mean that you win the championship, Chairman? Uh, Assuming that I fully believe in the Permanent Secretary, that you're going to develop North Lantau and conserve the southern part. But once the government announced the development blueprint for Lantau, first of all, the public has pointed out many times that there are people with vested <coughs> interests on the Lantau Development Advisory Committee. Many of the members own land on Lantau. I will not repeat such scandals here. Yeah. After the government announced it's going to develop Lantau in South Lantau, in Puyo, Chansa and Shui Hao, and even Mui Wo, Silver Mine Bay, we are seeing more and more destruction of the environment. And sites which originally had not been destroyed are now being destroyed. Dr. Yu 
uh, raise a very specific question. If the government really want to conserve land out south, uh, it doesn't need to, you don't need that committee. You, you could have done something beforehand. You can designate land out south as a protected area which will not be affected by the, 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 the development uh, plan. If the government keep repeating their mantra saying you is going to conserve land tau south, why aren't you doing that? Where's the what's the difficulty? I think this involves certain legal issues. I'm not a legal expert, but we will consult a legal advice again. That is in the, the, the development plan. If there is no arrangement for DPA, uh, can we do it? We can seek further legal advice suddenly. But let me emphasize that Mr. Kwok was saying that for if there is any illegal destruction of the environment, we will step up the enforcement. Burma Secretary is legal. It is so-called legal because the site is not designated DPA, so they can continue to dump, you know, have, you know, uh, debris. Uh, on these sites. If it is uh, illegal, we will take, take enforcement action. If it is legal, we will uh, have solutions. For example, in the Natural Conservation Fund, we've reserved $30 million at Shui Hao, Tai O, and, and we will, uh, we, we will we'll, we'll set aside $30 million uh, to, to, to include some conservation elements in the project. And this is already being discussed by the task force. Chair, Madam Chair, I'm very disappointed. This is the, 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 the most important part. I understand where the government has all kinds of legal experts. It's not possible that they don't understand this concept of DPA. You are now proposing to create this post, and you don't even know this, this basic background information. Why? So when you talk about conserving South Land Tower, I really doubt whether you really are going to do it or whether you can do it. And the $30 million, you can take it back. The land that we're talking about, we're talking about massive pieces of land. Uh, even though land treatment is very cheap in Land Tower, several thousand dollars per square foot, we're talking about tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, you are spending $30 million to, as an incentive to encourage your landowners not to destroy the environment? Are uh, you joking? You all know that for the development of anti North East or at Wang Chow, the same scenario is being repeated again and again. Land Town South is very important because government has uh, a policy in place. Now, can you tell us when you're going to designate this area as a DPA? Is a timetable? I think that would be difficult. I said I would seek further legal advice. The preliminary advice we were given is that it's not feasible. Now, we already have a OZP for that. And can we add back the DPA? Legally, it's not very feasible. That's my understanding. I think the PS is lying here. Your attitude doesn't help at all. I'm very disappointed. Second round, Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Thank you, Madam Chair. On this proposal, actually, we have discussed this at the relevant panel and the establishment subcommittee in the last term and also at this term as well. We've spent hours and hours discussing it already. I think we have uh, certain rules of procedures to follow here. For wider policy issues, these should be uh, raised at the full council meeting or the relevant, relevant panel meetings. But I understand that, uh, Madam Chair, you have been lenient. So because we talk about conservation versus development at Lantau, there will be a lot of views. But I think we should focus on the present proposal in relation to the personnel um, establishments. 
There may be other issues related to planning. And the PSA said that the policy is very clear. They said that they will be uh, implementing development at the North Conservation for the South. And some members are concerned about issues on law enforcement. So if you are concerned about that, well, then it's um, we should support this um, uh, uh, establishment of a team because the work is important. It will um, help coordinate um, issues. Of course, if we talk about law enforcement, which we will not just rely on this dedicated team, other government departments have to come into to play. But then we need this dedicated team to do the coordination. So if you're asking the PS to give you the overall plan for development and conservation of Lantau today, then I think you are um, here setting the priorities, setting the wrong priorities here. The government, uh, CEDD, has do, done preparatory work, and today, they are now asking for the establishment of this SLO. So I think rather we should focus on today on discussing creating these posts so that we can seize hold of the development opportunities in Lantau. I reiterate today that I support this proposal, and I don't have any follow-up questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Third round, uh, two are on the queue. Any other member wishing to ask a question? We have asked uh, questions for a long time already. Mr. Eddie Ju and Dr. Fernando Zhang, fourth round. So four are on the queue now. Professor uh, Dr. Edward Yu. I try to better manage the time. Okay, second round. Uh, Dr. Fernando Zhang. Madam Chair. Dr. Lo uh, said that we've asked uh, questions for a long time, and that's because the issue is contentious. There have been many opposing views expressed, and even in your own consultancy study report, you said that there are more opposing views than supporting views in their consultation. So I don't know why they they found the issues so urgent. Colleagues have asked a very simple technical question, and that is the loophole in your law has made it possible for land owners to illegally dump or uh, dump the construction waste on their plots. As long as the landowners agree to that, then that's considered legal. So these um, construction has been, destruction has been going on all the time, and the problem is serious. And we said that uh, we will establish positions to uh, develop a land house space for all scheme and so on. You s you've been saying time and again that you will develop and conserve, but what we're seeing in reality that there has been destruction going on every day. If you don't uh, pluck the loophole in the law, what's the use of setting up this office? If you don't have any ways to set, um, curb such destruction, then what's the point of talking about conservation? Well, as we are debating or arguing this here at this moment, destruction is um, going on out there because there is a profit to make. This is so simple. In, not only in Lantau, but um, this kind of a thing happens in other parts of Hong Kong time and again as well. We want to um, protect Hong Kong's assets. So we should not, in the name of development, allow Lantau to be destroyed. 
P.S. You said that you would look at it, but then you said that legally it's infeasible. So, what ways and means would you do to stop such dumping of construction waste? Well, we share the concern of uh, Dr. Zhang. Uh, in our policy, we will have conservation for the South. So, if we uh, release a blueprint in the future, we will be able to tell the public clearly that we will have conservation for the South, then we hope that the incentives uh, to destroy will be reduced. And Dr. Zhang asked whether um, legally, is there anything we can do? Several months ago, we have asked, I have asked my colleague to explore into the issue and the initial results show that is not uh, very feasible because we have already an OZP there and we don't have an DPA and now you are asking for DPA to cover that as well so legally it's quite difficult so but I anyway I have undertaken that that we will go back and explore I, I cannot guarantee that that can be done but we will study it is it uh, it's totally impossible under the law we'll have to look at uh, it further I hope that uh, Dr. Zhang can understand that at specific locations where there are great intensive incentives to uh, do destruction, uh, we have reserved some resources uh, to try to cut down on the incentives uh, for destroying the plots. Why can't you amend the law? Why can't you uh, pluck the loophole in the law? Why do you have to allow the loophole to persist? Of course, you can't do anything. If that is the case, I don't have the detailed information here on how or where whether we can amend the law. Can you give us a written reply after you've sought the legal advice? The third round, Mr. Lang Kwok Hong, followed by Dr. Kwok Kaki. When when you were the official, well, assume the post of the of. Um, the official position, where is Low, what was Dr. Lo Wai Kwok? Mr. Hart, you were asking for money to um, extend the Chung Chung New Town. That's uh, con contentious, but I'll basically uh, support it. Topside development at Hong Kong PCF, island of Hong Kong Jamba Gao Bridge, I oppose to it. I have to talk over it. F. Strategic studies for artificial islands in the central waters, including ELM, contentious issue, I oppose it. These are the three core issues. Now, if these uh, item, three items are not included, and I would already have given you the money. So the government has uh, sought, say, um, billions of dollars to do the initial study. And then once they are committed to it, they said that, uh, well, we've already committed to it, and there's no way of turning back. Well, I will not fall into your trap. I will be opposing you strongly. You are setting, um, well, playing a trick on us. And the government official uh, uh, is not well versed in the issue either. Mr. Paul Chan knows nothing about development. He's just an accountant, Tony Chair. Uh, he lost out in the election for the electrical members. He's now coming back. He's now coming back to serve as official. So that's why I said that I have no confidence confidence in the bureau. If you assume the post as the as the bureau director, then I have confidence in you. Well, if you uh, stand, you have uh, stood for election as a CE, then I will support uh, you in your study of 2030 plus. This is so uh, corrupt. The other day, well, I said that maybe some substandard bricks uh, were used. Well, it's found to be the case now. You haven't even managed to do, uh, manage um minor issues properly. How can you manage uh, major issues? And you're now asking for billions of dollars on this. So let's work on the policies first. Well, don't play tricks on us. Uh, every time we've approved funding for you, then you would come back and say that we've already committed to it. No way of turning back. This is not the first time that this has happened. Why are you asking for um, the setting up of an office? And then we deploying posts for the other four offices. So, well, just seek funding from us uh, item by item. Don't do everything at one go. Don't um, work on these grand projects at one go. 
Now, if you just take out, if you take out A C, delete A C F, then I would already have given you the money. P S. Do you have any response? No. The third round, Doctor Kwakaki. Thank you, Madam Chair. If the government has good justifications in its paper. And what is done is um, is considered a trustworthy. Then we have every reason to approve the funding. But the basic question here is this: uh, the P as has mentioned this, there will be conservation at Southern Lantau. Even without this office, you can still do conservation. The f the first thing that you should do is to cover Southern. Land out with a DPA plan. This is an obligation of the government. Without doing that, every other discussion is meaningless. And the second thing that you should do for the future government, if Carrie Lam is to conserve Lantau Island, she should naturally do this. This is a very much a transition period, and in fact, the items mentioned in your paper are very contentious. The legislators and the public will not agree to these items, including the artificial islands in the central waters. Your own consultant has engaged the uh, the Xi'an College to do a po opinion poll. Over half of the respondents didn't agree to. Uh, the project of artificial islands and uh, the ELM, and 80% of the public members of the public don't know anything about this uh, artificial islands in the central waters. And you're asking for funding from the electrical to work on something which should not be proceeded with. So that's not logical. So shouldn't the the uh, new term of government well irrespective of who will assume the post of the development secretary the government should respond um on this point you, it should come up with the an overall blueprint for lantau and you are asking for this now and so many items are so controversial and you haven't given the de as the details on how um lantau island should be conserved maybe you can do it through administrative means so maybe you are abusing your power here, or you are treating Carrie Lam like nothing. Maybe give the new term of government, say, one month or so to think through this and come back, or else uh, the government will be committing, committing another wrongdoing here. Any response? Um, we've been talking about conservation development and at Lantau for uh, two to three years, and the proposal was submitted to the last term of the LECCO and was uh, agreed upon by the ESC. Uh, it's just that uh, it, um, uh, it, it was not put on the agenda uh, of the FC last time. P.S. You haven't responded to me on this point. You can you totally disregard? Thinking of the new term of government, say, for example, maybe the new term of government doesn't think uh, the direction goes far enough, and maybe they will add in a, a few more people, well, even uh, say 50 people to um, to work on this. So you, you are not uh, giving the new term of government any chance to um, r reflect on their thinking to you, or what? God, you're I don't think the work of government should stop just because we have a change in administration. And so so uh, this is something ongoing and we should continue. That is not the answer. I think you should ask the consult the uh uh, uh C E Destiny's office and see ask whether or not she has any views and please give us a written uh, uh re response at the next meeting. Mr Chen Chi Chin, your third round. Thank you. At the last round, in the last round, I asked about the development of Lemma Island. In Annex Enclosure 4, uh, it is said that the, the, this director will be responsible for the development of uh, Lantau and uh, Lemma uh, 
the development and conservation of these islands. So all the outlying islands will be under this uh, 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 office. Is that right? I'm most concerned, of course, about sustainable development in enclosure seven. When you talk about the chief engineer, Land Tower One, the second function is to implement the project, the strategies and policies regarding development of land and conservation of land tower. So it's not just the Development Bureau. Would it also include the EPD or the Environment Bureau? The Environment Bureau or the EPD, well, I think that will be the minimum requirement. Uh, you need to certify EIA, and and uh, once once you don't, so that's the minimum requirement. But conservation doesn't mean you should only meet the minimum standard, and we would be satisfied. For the development of land tau, what are the roles of the other departments or bureaus? For this chief engineer, which has to implement the policies of different policy bureaus for uh, so item three is to uh, lead a team of staff with knowledge and experience in natural nature conservation and so on and so forth. I think members have asked the same question before. For this team, other than the senior operas and two operas, what 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 are these people? Without this establishment, is anyone working on the conservation of land tower? Is it that after you've added this term that you suddenly wake up and, and, and realize you need to do this as well? I'll defer to the director, Mr. Lam. Thank you. Mr. Chen asks several questions. First of all, whether or not all the outlying islands uh, incorporated uh, uh, under the uh, SLO. In the paper, we've already outlined the terms of reference of the uh, SLO. In enclosure 50, uh, you'll find that the uh, island's neighboring land tower is under the responsibility of the SLO. Regarding enclosure 7 and the terms of reference of one of the chief engineers, Underneath uh, uh, this uh, underpinning the chief engineer, there will be uh, three forestry officers. They are professionals, and and they are now working with the AFCD. They are negotiating the secondment of some of the staff to help us implement the work. As for the responsible bureau. Now, this chief engineer is in charge of the islands when performing his duties. Now, other than this, our office, we need to liaise with other policy bureaus in relation to policy matters. So, this chief engineer, one of the functions of the chief engineer is to implement the work and policies of the other bureaus. Eddie G, your fourth round. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam, you said that I asked a question regarding population projection, and that is irrelevant. I hope you understand that the development of Lantau, especially Lantau East, the critical point or the crucial point is uh, about our Population policy. According to the figures released by the Census and Statistics Department, by 2043, we're going to have a population of 8.2 million, after which it will start to decline. Looking at 2030 plus, including the artificial island in on East uh, Lantau, the development of Lantau East, they are going to build a city which can accommodate at least a population of 9 million. So I'd like to ask whether you have a publishing policy. What is your direction in this regard? You are building an, a, a place that can accommodate, you know, 
more than 8 million people. So, so do you have any uh, plans? Uh, I ask question about population because I am a conservationist. And that's why I'll, I'm, fo uh, I'm only focusing on land tile south. That's not true. What I'm most concerned about is that since we're spending so much money on the infrastructures, we should come up with the most economical way to develop land tile. Many colleagues have challenged the need for the artificial island on land tile east because uh, it's linked up with many bridges and tunnels and it's going to cost you know, several hundred billion dollars. And such investment in such infrastructures would mean that we will continue to be affected by the high land premium policy. People will continue to pay expensive prices for the, for, for the properties. And uh, since we're spending so much on infrastructures, you are forced to sell, uh, to, 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 to sell land to the, the main enterprises. And this is not the direction of development that we like to see. Uh, Mr. Chu, I think you are asking very broad policy question, uh, question relating to broad policies which should be raised at the relevant panel. And also you are asking for specific you know, data which the Permanent Secretary may not be able to give you uh, immediately today. Well, one of the questions I asked involved the Director of the Census and Statistics Department. I think the SL Oh, it's so important. So the officials which come to discuss this item with us should not just be of officers from the Development Bureau. It should also, the other departments should also be represented. The whole basis of the discussion has to do with population. If the Census and Statistics Department is not coming, how can we have answers to those questions? So we don't know, we're not getting the whole picture. Well, you're a member of the development panel. Why, why don't you raise this issue at the panel? I've asked the same question before, and they will only, you know, you know, so, you know, give us a three-minute answer. Well, in that case, for the such detailed questions, perhaps uh, the development bureau should consult with the other bureaus and departments, and then give you a written reply. What you're talking about boils down to a question of trust. All right, Prime Secretary, do you have a simple answer? I don't have Mr. G's question of, uh, with me, but I can, uh, but I can say that if Mr. G is talking about population figures, we can certainly obtain those figures from the Census and Statistics Department uh, to the satisfaction of Mr. G. Regarding the average household size, which is declining, and we're having more and more families. The average size of our accommodation is very small compared with the more advanced uh, countries. For all these reasons, we need more land. And in the 2030 plus vision, we've suggested that uh, that uh, land out east is a, is a major, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, <clears throat> area for development. KK Kwa, I hope. Members understand that we want the SLO to be able to really ensure there will be sustainable development. But we're not satisfied how they're going to conserve Lantau South and develop Lantau North. In Para 13, you say the SLO will be a one-stop office and you will uh, improve the environment and Lantau. Uh, I ask a very basic and fundamental question that is, through land, uh, proper land, through pl land plan, land use planning, uh, either through administrative decisions and orders, you can conserve the environment. If your office, the people in your office don't have the expertise or resources, you wouldn't be able to conserve land, South Land Tower, for example. I asked a question about DPA. You said you need to seek legal advice. If your office don't have legal expertise so that the government can come up with some administrative initiatives, it's not anything new. In the OCP, the government is not forbidden to conserve a certain area through administrative plans. 
But if we do not have the necessary manpower and other resources to do this, of course we would be concerned. And that's why uh, uh, if you need to deploy, you know, an officer from the uh, 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 DFJ. So, I mean, could you tell us uh, in terms of conservation, what have you done? And if what you've done is not enough, shouldn't you engage professionals to do it? Simple response. I don't know whether Dr. Kwok is suggesting that we should expand our team. Well, that would depend on the, the need as to whether or not we need a, a, a legal team. And I will not repeat myself. I've already answered some very specific questions already. Madam Chair, I'm asking the Prime Secretary a very specific question. Have you ever considered uh, this? And what is the result of the consideration? You don't need to expand your team. You can uh, seek on uh, yeah, you know, uh, people from other departments. If you think you need to seek on uh, uh, legal experts from other departments to perfect your plan, why won't you do that? How can you say that for conservation, have we done the most fundamental part? It's not just a question of seconding a few colleagues from another department. Whether or not we can, you know, take the problem, uh, you know, by invoking the laws. Uh, once we've set up the office, we should be able to look at this in detail. If we don't have the expertise, how? What, what will you be able to look look into? You are you going to ask the engineer to do this? Once the office is set up, what expertise does the engineer have to make recommendations in relation in respect of the laws? I don't think you need to specifically create a post for that purpose. I'm just talking about secondment. When we work on th this, there will be teams on the government to help us. As we're not, there is a need for secondment. Uh, we will uh, we will consider it uh, in due course. Uh, Mr. Leung Kohong is on the queue. Are members willing to extend the meeting for 50 minutes so that Mr. Leung Kohong can ask his question? Or I'll allow you to ask this last question, Ms. Leung. Mr. Chu said that he is confused. So, so I think you're actually like it's like you're creating a smoke screen to confuse us. You uh, provide for one forestry officer who is in charge of environmental protection. Does environmental conservation only means uh, planting trees? We're talking about how many trees you need to uh, fell and how many new trees will be planted. On Lantau, you're well known for planting the wrong species of trees which cannot grow there. Your whole office working on conservation and you only have a single forestry officer. What other experts do you have? So what are you talking about? You said you would also focus on conservation. So I don't think you know you really have a, a you know a capable team. Why can you explain why you only have a single forestry officer? Yeah, this is the part that is confusing us. What do you have on your team? It's very simple. It's not just one forestry officer, three, rather, and I've said many times that every officer will attach to development and uh, attach importance to development and conservation alike. You've got engineers and town planners, but only you've got three forestry office, officers who will work on um, environmental conservation. Are you just planting trees or what? A anything to add? No. So shouldn't we be angry, Mrs. Yip? If you were the official, you would already have uh, sacked him. Okay, time's up. Meeting adjourned. The next meeting is 8.30 a.m. 6th of June.